Hey, what's going on guys? So today I decided to make a video because of a message I received on Instagram. I had a DM regarding failing the boards. Now I'm gonna read to you, the name's gonna stay anonymous, but I'm gonna read to you the message and then I'm gonna give you advice because I feel like a lot of people are going through this, not just this one person. However, this one person does feel like they are alone. So this, the message says, I'm reaching out to you because I recently found out that I didn't pass the pants. I feel ashamed, disappointed, and I realize that I'm not the greatest test taker, but perform much better clinically. The hardest part of it all is feeling like you gave everything you had to prepare and still coming up short. The feeling of seeing all your classmates post on social media that they passed while you sit in shame is the weirdest feeling, and I'd never wish that upon anyone. So very quickly, a couple of things here. A couple of things that I want to get across for those of you who are in a similar situation because I feel like many of you are. And we often feel alone because those that post on social media are the people that are passing. Those that post are the ones that are accomplished. You will hardly ever see somebody post about a failure, an obstacle, a setback because that's something that we choose as, a hum as humans, we choose not to share with the world because we often feel like we're alone. We feel embarrassed like this person said. Now, for me to say that I've never failed is, it would be a lie. If anyone has ever told you that they've done everything perfectly, that's a lie. The only way that can happen is if you never challenge yourself, if you never go outside your comfort zone. Otherwise, if you do, you're going to fail. Now, if you didn't pass your boards, this is not a failure. The only way it's a failure is if you decide not to continue forward. The only way it's a failure is if you allow this to become a failure. In other words, this is nothing more than a setback. It's an obstacle. It's a hindrance. It's a little roadblock that you have to overcome because so long as you're pushing forward, so long as you're here to remedy the situation, it can't be a failure, right? It's simply a setback. And in the grand scheme of life, you fail the boards. So what? It pushes you back three months, four months, even let's say half a year compared to the rest of your life, right? Six months compared to 30 years in a profession, 40 years of profession doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. It's, it's trivial. So for that reason, I want you to think of this as nothing more than a setback. Now, like I said, most of us feel alone because those that post are typically those that have accomplished, right? Now, standardized testing does not predict how well of a clinician you will be. There are many students who suck at standardized testing, however, become great clinicians. Why? because it's completely different. How you answer a question, how you decipher what they're trying to ask you is not going to be the same as what you see in clinical practice. The patient is not going to give you the story in a vignette and ask you, what is the most common diagnosis that I might have? What is my first line therapy? There's a lot more that goes into clinical practice than there is when taking a standardized exam. And you cannot hold yourself accountable or you can't feel like a failure just because you don't know or didn't answer a question correctly. But I guarantee you, if you have the people skills and you know how to communicate, you'll be able to pull and extract information because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many questions you get wrong. It doesn't matter how many questions you get right. It doesn't matter if you're in the one percentile or 99th percentile. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, all that matters is that you're helping your patients. At the end of the day, your patient wants to know that you care, that you're going to do everything in your power to make them better. And even if it's not you that's doing the healing, maybe all they want is a referral. Maybe all they want is for you to listen because at the end of the day, at the core, we're all human and we all have the same needs. So just because you failed a board exam, it is not the end of the world. I myself have failed many, many times. However, I don't consider these failures. I simply consider them obstacles. I consider them setbacks. I consider them roadblocks. I learn from them. I figure out what it is I did wrong. And that's great. The fact that I'm failing means I learn more because the person who doesn't fail is in a little bubble and they're scared to leave that little bubble because they know what's in the bubble. And they know that the second they leave that bubble, there's a chance that shit might go wrong. There's a chance they might be embarrassed. They might be ridiculed. They might mess up. They might feel inferior. 
But the only way to improve and to get better is to surround yourself by people who are doing more than you. And by default, you will mess up. But you'll mess up and you'll learn and you'll grow and you'll adapt and you won't mess up anymore. And then you will become a better person, a better clinician. You will improve in all areas of life. So please, do not take this as a sign of weakness. Do not take this as a sign that you will be a poor clinician. Simply look at this as an obstacle. For all of you out there who are struggling with the same, I hope this helps. If any of you have any questions, then you can go ahead and send any questions at all either to my personal Instagram, which is and, A-N-D, underscore R-E-I-D, or you can send me an email to andrew at physicianassistantboards.com. Either way, more than happy to answer and help you guys in any way possible. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys later. Take care, guys.